Hello, everyone, and welcome to this new community show, Creative the Zine, where we will be creating a zine in six episodes from A to Z. Today, we will be focusing on creating a character design, depending on what you are trying to say in your zine, also using Adobe Firefly as a start of reference to create that character and to create your story. And if we can get there, we'll potentially go into Illustrator to start that character tracing. So let's hop in. I've made you a presentation. Hopefully the mods can share that in the chat for you, where you can follow along and hopefully create the zine at the same time. And I'd love to see your process. And there's like a whole thing at the end where you can send your designs. So let's get started. So as you can see here, this lovely gift, uh, I won't lie, I am pretty happy with how this is this turned out <laughs> um, but this is essentially what we will be doing so it's an eight page fold zine that you can print at home and just do a lot without necessarily going to the printer you can go to the printer but you can also just do it in the comfort of your home so essentially uh it's like just by folding it and you will you, you'll notice this project will go between going on like working on your computer to working with your hands and pencil and paper because I mean why not <laughs> and it's it's fun to do so so um here you can see a little maquette or a dummy if you want of where all the content will go and some of you may ask what is a zine right um and a lot of people will say zine which is why I called this show creative design, because if you don't know how to pronounce it, you'll say design, haha, <laughs> pun intended. <laughs> um, but a zine basically was invented a few years ago. It, you, we saw a bit of um, a zine, not a bit, like the surge of zines in the 70s, and it was mostly used to um, like for political movements, for activism, and they were done with photocopiers. People would cut some letters out, put it like paste it in and then like photocopy and then distribute it. But since then it has grew into a whole different um, beast. If you want, you can still find those little mini printable zine that you can do at home, or you can find some more refined zines, just like the Ottawa design club is doing here in like a full book. This is also called a zine. So, Sky is the limit when it comes to zine. And the difference between a zine and a magazine is mostly because it is self-published and you decide the content that you put in. Also, there is no advertising, which is great because as designers, right, we don't like that eyesore sometimes of like advertising. So here you go. This is your definition for the zine. I'll say hi to CJ. I'll say hi to Joshua. Omakarn, it's so nice to see you here. I'm very excited to be doing this with you. Okay, character design process. So at first, before designing your character, obviously you need to have something to say. So when I was creating my this mini zine, I had to do a bit of soul searching, right? What do I like? What do I wanna say? And I will tell you, this is actually what took the most time with, with building this whole project. So I did draft a list for you if you want to maybe just get some inspiration, but it can be whatever you want. So if I if I looked at what I like here, I put down some freelancing facts, famous quotes or idioms, inspiration mindset, uh, favorite songs, maybe it's some lyrics, illustration, local culture, fandom, vintage stuff. <laughs> pop culture and visual arts. This is pretty much easy in a nutshell right there. But then I also had to, to think about, okay, if I'm going to talk about this, I need to have a character that's going to embody everything that is going to be said. So here I also drafted a list of what I could potentially do. So I have young creative, a cool cat, a cute monster, a plant, museum statues, a juice, uh, juice box, musical instrument, cartoon. Oh, there's a typo here. My apologies. I'll fix that after. <laughs> Celebrity caricature or famous artist. So again, um, 
this was definitely a big process. And what I ended up with, as you can, as you saw at the beginning, or I can actually go back here, this mini mascot was not how I started, actually. Um, and we will go through this whole iteration because you know what? Your first idea, most of the time, isn't the best. The second idea, a little better, but maybe it doesn't offer as much. If you can get to the third idea where you actually push yourself to think about every little component of this idea and how it can grow, well, most of the time you have a golden ticket for this idea. So I usually like to work in Adobe Firefly with a mood board, but because I really wanted this process to be a little different for me and for you, I drafted a word uh, bank for you that you can use as prompts. So at first I did start with a just young creative character design and we will go and start here. So if you go into Adobe Firefly and you go into text to image, there's already some pretty amazing stuff here. We will write a few things. So we'll say young creative. And we can go back again to our word, word bank. We will say sunglasses. Maybe tattoos. We'll see what happens. And I like long hair. So we'll do long hair. And let's see what happens. There's also that thinking dance. If you want to dance with me, you're more than welcome. Ooh, look at that. And I must say that I had some um, like aspects here that were already selected. So I have art. I didn't want a photo. We could do a photo, but because this is going to be a character design and probably flat illustration, uh, depending on the style that you're going with, see like this would be... <laughs> a little harder to trace after because this is where we're going, right? We want to be inspired to trace in a illustrator after. So art is definitely the right one to just make sure it is like checked here. Um, so just want to make sure here also flat illustration. Sometimes just by adding this, it will maybe give you the style that you're trying to have. See, this is already better. Ooh, this dude here is really cool. I'm going to download that here. All right. Now I want a woman. So let's see what it does. It's cool how the tattoo here is integrated into the shirt so let me actually remove sunglasses and tattoo just to see what it does hmm this is actually not bad here but it's not quite like what i want i'm gonna remove flat illustration and We'll say a uh, hip, just to see. Again, that mini dance. You might see a lot of that today. <laughs> okay, so this is looking like I wanted to, oh, like she is gorgeous right here. I'm gonna download that. And you can also try different style. Like right now we tried flat illustration, which is a style in itself, but what if you wanted to have ink drawing? Oh, and I didn't write that properly. Let's just regenerate that. I've tried this earlier and the results were quite amazing. And I hopefully it's gonna do it for, see? You can also apply some styles and this is looking really cool. And whenever you're creating a character, um, again, you have to think about how will you use the character? For me, whenever I was designing um, like a full person, 
because I because this is a personal project, I thought that maybe it was going to be a lot of work to recreate this character into a different position with different uh, expressions. And I know myself, I don't like when personal projects go on for too long. I like when they're quick and, and dirty, if you want, like when they're done fast. Um, so I looked at this and then I'll go back to my presentation just to walk you through my full thought process. So here I actually have a prompt that you can use for yourself as well, but urban uh, women with long hair, artsy looking, comment style, uh, character, low details, which was great. But like I said, how was I going to bring this into a style that I could just do over and over again, that I could change everything up. So I printed this image that you see here and use some tracing paper and just let like, like dr me draw over it. And I didn't want to have too much detail. I actually have some with a lot of details, but again, it would defeat the purpose. So I wanted to try if I could do it with one, just one stroke with my pencil. And it ended up with this. I was quite happy with it at the beginning, but then I'm like, uh, again, it's just not like whenever I was looking at it and maybe this is my brand strategist or like branding design brain working here, but I, I, I couldn't see like a font going well with this, or I couldn't see um, like just a lot of colors going with this. So it was a no go. So I had to go to my second idea. So if I go back to my list, I had museum statue. And then I'm like, oh, it could be nice to have a statue and who is overhearing conversation at the museum as the content of the zine. So let's try that. So Greek statue. Uh, side view because you can also tell Firefly from which view do you want to see things. Uh, we'll say woman. Let's see what happens. Again, that mini dance. See, like this is looking pretty good. Let's try here with flat illustration again. This here is actually looking quite good. This is great. Just going to download everything because I love this. And like I said, this is for a purpose of getting inspired, right? This is not going to be the final image at all. So then I was looking at this again, and I'm going to go back to this presentation. And I mean, even though I was going to flatten it and maybe do it in a very naive way it still wasn't just it for me and i said what type of conversation do people have in museum right most people don't speak at all or listen to the guide okay i actually needed to sleep on it and that's what why i meant i needed to do a bit of soul soul searching for this project but then I, as I was talking to a friend and I think she's watching, so Caroline, hey, th thank you. Um, I think I just said something like, oh yeah, I'll have to get my creative juice going. That's where it hit. I'm going to do a creative juice mascot. I've been in love with mascot designing these days. They are very much in style and because a firefly does not necessarily understand the word mascot. Let's say if we do mascot, see, it's too short, but let's see. Person with big eyes. I had to dissect it down a little bit. Let's see what it's going to do. See, this is really, really good. Actually, if you give it some uh, more prompts, but it's still not quite that 70s style that we are like looking to have. Like I actually did a bit of a research on uh, Adobe stock and this is, this is the type of eyes and 
like the arms and legs that we are looking to get. That's okay because we will create our own, right? So let's go back to Adobe Firefly and tell it, let's do some juice box. Juice box, side view, 3D. Let's see what that does. Hey, Caroline, <laughs> she is here. So <laughs> there you go. And I want to say hi to Shiva. I love the trial and error in this process. Yes, you have to do that. Like I said, like the first idea, most of the time isn't the right one. So you just need to push it. Or maybe the first idea is good, but it's not fully fleshed out. So you need to let it simmer, right? It's like a good spaghetti sauce. If you let it simmer for a few hours, it tastes better. It's the same for ideas. Okay, so look at this. Um, this is looking quite good, actually. It's not quite the shape that we want. So let's just go and generate that again. But funky stuff is happening. And I will also make it into a portrait because I know that the zine that we will be working with is in portrait. <laughs> Clever Devlin, all the results are so close and so far off. Correct. But you know what? That is okay because you can't use any of the images from Fire like from Firefly to be in the finished project, or you can only use it for personal project. And even though this is a personal project, I do like to iterate, iterate, iterate that you can't find the source of the image. So this is actually the perfect place to start. But again, um, you'll still make it your own. I love, I love this one. Actually, we will download this. And I love how it's also giving me some cool designs that maybe I can get inspired from. Like these two. This one doesn't know if it's a <laughs> if it's a cap or if it's like the one that you open on the side. <laughs> how about the milk carton? It's the same shape. We want to do a juice box, but that's okay. A firefly does not need to know that, right? So carton. <laughs> Uma Karm, let it simmer. Yeah, that that you'll you'll hear that a lot during this full show. We have six episodes together, so <laughs> you'll hear some Izzyisms if you want. <laughs> okay, so here we are getting somewhere. Let's see. Let I removed the 3D for some reason, but let's do that. And let's just try it again. That's right, CJ. Everything is be better marinated. And I do like my sriracha on the side too. Make everything spicy. That's how I like it. Okay. So let's just go back to the prompt that I actually used. Sometimes I do this too. When I'm feeling uninspired about the words, and I am such a visual person, that's why sometimes I will do a mood board to just find the words to describe what I'm seeing. But as I'm just working more and more in Adobe Firefly, I'm building myself a word bank, a personal word bank, or even like a sentence prompt just to go back to if ever I need to go back to um, like specific images. See right there, three, uh, three dimension. Oh, that's actually interesting because I had the, the number three and the letter D. It still understood it because it's here. But when I do three dimension, like written down, it actually gives me a better result. So that is very interesting and maybe something that can elevate your AI game. Okay. Let's say if I say no cap what it's going to do. Hey, Adam, thank you so much for watching. Let's do a refresh here. Let's see if it's going to understand no cap. It did for one. <laughs> this is a really wide box, but this is interesting and we could definitely use this for maybe even other characters that if you want to bring some personality. So I'm going to download this. Okay, what do you think chat? Should we start tracing? Do we have a good idea on how to use Firefly to create your mascot? Let me know. 
And as we do this, I just want to show you just some other results that I got while doing this research and how I got inspired from it. So like I said, I like to work digitally and then with pencil and paper. I wanted to see if I could bring my concept to life. So I printed a lot of those Im images from Firefly, brought it back to, um, I have it here actually, some tracing paper, which you can see uh, on here, it's the same. And just wanted to see if I could give it some personality. So I just started with the box first, as you can see all that, so very, very fast. And I'm a lefty. My hand was all dirty and black at the end of this process, but that's totally okay. Then when looking at, oops, sorry, this type of eyes here, or even this, this is a good one. Oh, it's the same. This is great. Just wanted to see if it would work well together. And I wanted to have different expression. And as I said in, at the beginning, I wanted something that was going to be fast and something that, you know, I could tell a story. This one for me felt like it's it was the right angle to start with, to introduce the character. But I did like this one, like the point of view, because it's a bit from above. Um, maybe this is for another character when we introduce a new one, um, right? These are a little funky looking. <laughs> they were done very fast, but they're still there as a reference uh, to use from. This is just sometimes whenever you are, you know, you're not sure. And I was not sure in this process at all, but um, it, it was just like quick. So that way I'm not wasting a lot of time in Illustrator tracing for hours and then not liking the results, which is exactly what I did for this one here. Learn from your mistake. Oops. Okay, so let's go into Illustrator and we will place our images from Firefly. and start tracing. I'll bring a few. To start with. And they are huge. Because I will be printing this mini zine with just like a regular eight and a half by 11. That's the canvas size that I'm working with right now just to make sure everything is proportioned when you start. All right. So this is a different view. I'm going to start with this one. It's pretty good. Okay. Let's lock that. And you know what? I am going to name my layers. I will actually unlock everything, but lock the layer instead and work on top. Call it drawings. Amazing. Do we have some questions? And if you do, let me know. Let's go tracing. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Rod. Okay. Uh, Todd, good new school, old school combo with the AI and drawing. Yes. Uh, that's what I've been doing actually, Todd, with most of my design work these days. I have been conceptualizing in, oops, sorry, I'm trying to, conceptualizing in AI softwares and then bring it back, trace it, go over it, and it's been having a blast. Okay, for some reason, my pen tool isn't the right pen tool. It's what happens sometimes? Oh, because it's here. My bad. It was always there. <laughs> okay. So using the pen tool, this is definitely something that you'll need to just have a lot of practice with to master. 
But once you do have a good understanding of how it works, it's the best. It gives you a lot of freedom. And here I didn't change my color, but usually I just like to have a crazy color just to see what I'm doing on top. And I also don't do the Bezier curve, which you'll if you don't know what that is, it's this here. That's why I couldn't see my <laughs> my pen tool. But this tool here will help with the Bezier curve. We don't need that much, but I like to just start with clean lines and then I can alter. I'm just going to lock this because sometimes whenever you're trying to connect, it removes the anchor if you do it on top of something that isn't locked. There you go. And I forgot to lock the other one. Perfect. Lock that. See, this is a little tricky here because you do want to have that dimension, but you, that's not a lot. Of space. Okay. And this I will keep unlock because I want to create that shadow here. So I'm just going to create a line that's going to go over it. I'm going, I always duplicate whenever, oh, it was actually locked. Whenever I'm, cre I'm going to be pat frying during it. <laughs> Adam, do you remember that? Adam did a live. He is watching and he created the verb pathfindering it uh, <laughs> but yes we're gonna be like cutting the shape so i always like to keep like an extra like a duplicate of that shape if ever i do need to go back to it just gonna do this here so then i have the shape individually and I can put it right here and it fits perfectly. Okay, going to group this. And I do want the corners to just be just a tad rounded, but that's okay because I can select everything, go into the corners, just like round it a little bit, not too much. I didn't get this one. This is like just, you know, you need to fiddle with it a little bit and that's totally normal. This one is not letting me because it's so tiny. And that's okay. We'll keep it like that and I'll fix it later. Okay. So then again, I'm going to duplicate. So just selecting it, holding the alt key and sliding it down. You know what? I actually don't like this little thing here after all. So I'm gonna restart it. Is there anyone here who has done some mascot design? And what was your process like? Did you do go into a lot of iteration like I did? start this over just going to connect it better there you go it's gonna be easier to work with so there is a lot of repetition at the beginning whenever you're tracing and you're setting stuff up 
that's normal. Um, and that's also how you get better at your craft and understanding how you can build something too by tracing it from something that already exists will help you to then freehand other illustration later on. It's the same for just drawing from pencil to paper. And uh, yeah, if you want to better your skill. I had a teacher that would always say that drawing is the backbone of painting. And I used to do a lot of painting in school. And he was right. Let me do the same thing here because I want to cut this one. It's going to get messy. My artboard is already messy. That's fine there. All right. So the shape here is looking quite good. Maybe we can trace this one just to give us just some options if you want to elevate our character. And again, right, this is a whole process. And thinking about those decisions will impact the full process of this zine down the road. Let's do, just going to unlock this layer. Let's do this one. What I like about this one is this like cool design that's happening right here. Like if it was folded in a fun way. And I'm going to trace it in another color to make sure that it is well defined. <laughs> I do notice that I have selected a mascot design that has straight line, so <laughs> it is easier. That was another reason why I didn't necessarily want to do a full character like a person um because again like lots of details i used to do some illustration with like just portraits of people and like to go into like other designs and i liked it but <laughs> i liked i liked it after it was done because it took so much time and and sometimes i would not quote my projects properly did not quote for the time that it would take me to do this illustration. So now I stick with something that's easier. And I also feel that this is what's in style right now. Not that you should design according to style. You should always design according to meaning. But just something to keep in mind. There you go. I'm bring this back here. Perfect. Forgot to lock my layers. Okay. I'm going to do the same, that cool shape here. You know what? I'm actually going to do this one as well. So if you are in the chat right now, 
what would you do as a character? Top of mind. Don't don't think about it. What's your first idea? Let me know. I'm curious to know. Again, go to Pathfinder. I like using this one just because it divides everything and you have all the little pieces. So depending on which one you're um, like seeking for your shape. I like this one because it just does everything for you in one in one click, which is great. I actually want to do this one too. And I can cut the shape in the same way. And again, I always duplicate, keep it there. Most of the time it goes outside the artboard. My artboard or mega messy. So like that, Pathfinder. There you go. Okay. Gonna... I think I have put the first tracing on the first layer, which happens, and that is okay. I'm just going to group it, and it brought everything on the second layer. Let's just be make sure. Yes, it did. Perfect. All right, now let's tackle this little cap here. The character needs a face. Yes, the face comes after. <laughs> a face would be good. Yes. So, I mean, we might have time to start tracing the eyes today. Um, I just want to make sure that we have the body so we understand the character's like identity. And then we'll go into face. And I do agree. Faces is what is the most fun to design and I'm going to show you just because this is angled in a specific way we're going to draw everything flat and then we're going to transform it so it's adjusted properly to the angle of the juice box or milk carton in this in this case Now, should we have a cap or no cap? I feel like we should just go right now and design the eyes as uh, <laughs> Clever Devlin mentioned. Hi, Kiran. Thank you so much for joining. Kiran just hosted an Adobe Live not too long ago. Make sure to check it out. So much good stuff on Adobe Live. Okay. This is quite good. And call me crazy, but I always like to have just a lot of, like whenever I'm happy with something, just because I might be playing with it a little later, just like to have some copies. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to just shut off this layer because we don't need it anymore. And look at that. We have some juice boxes. Okay. Everything that we have duplicated will go outside because we don't need it anymore. Can you imagine if my file is already messy like that in what, 30 minutes? <laughs> what a logo design file looks like? It's quite bad. <laughs> okay, so a face. So we have some inspiration here. If we go back to... Adobe stock, there is a lot of good stuff here. I want something that is very easy. Then again, I can just create and alter. Oh my gosh, that squiggly line. That squiggly line here is the best. Let me um, zoom in. This is awesome. So let's use that as inspiration by looking at it and 
created here. Again, I could just buy the eyes and put it in already, but I really want to make sure that it has the same thickness with the stroke. So I'm going to create it myself. Also, if I go back to this here, um, I do want to create like my own like lashes and, you know, just having some control. So I'm going to create them myself. Gonna go take the actually I'm going to take the rectangle tool. The same thing, making sure I have that perfect oval. And I'm gonna create one that I'm going to duplicate. Now, if we look at vintage mascot uh, design, there's a lot of interesting ways to do the eyes. And if you are interested, I actually purchased this book. This is not uh, <laughs> uh, sponsored, <laughs> but I purchased this book here called Mascot, which is amazing. It has a lot of great um, inspiration for mascots uh, here. It's like, you know, uh, let me see. Yeah, um, it's not necessarily like super detailed and some are super detailed. Uh, let me see if I can find another one that is very detailed. Like this one here. Okay, I hope you can see that properly. Um, but there is a lot of interesting ways to design eyes. Oh, actually, this is a good one too. Where you can see the eyes. And see how it adds a lot of personality. Um, so this is like... You need to do a bit of research because it's going to lighten up your character, whether you're going with a lot of details or whether you're going with like, again, like super simple, like I am just have fun with it. And maybe again, you'll need to have multiple iteration, but that's okay. Cause that's part of the process. So let's go back. And I want to have like a half and I have studied this like that actually that is a little too narrow and I want this straight looks like a coffee bean <laughs> for now but again trust the process actually I'm gonna start that over like that There you go, that's how I want it. So then when again, I use the Pathfinder. Let's just make sure it is black. Everything is black. Oops. This part will be the pupil. See how it's already starting to shape and because we don't need this I'm just going to duplicate this into two we'll align it the align tool is definitely my best friend and I mean I love a good lash I think lashes can give a lot of personality so we're just going to be very simple here, just one straight line. For the top one. <laughs> and I think I'm going to do three. Now this, I just created another one, put it a bit in an angle. And I wanna make sure that the other one will be the exact angle, but reflected. So I'm just gonna go to transform, reflect, and Horizontally, I will just make sure it's distributed evenly like that. Group it, center it. And what I like in Adobe Illustrator with the stroke here, you may not have this on the side because this is how I put my menu on the side. But if you go into window, 
and you go to stroke, this menu will appear and you can actually select the rounded cap, which just makes it a bit more finish um, for the lashes. And sometimes that's all, that's all you need to just make sure that everything kind of looks cohesive. And I'm just going to duplicate the eye. Just going to make sure it's aligned again. Oops, this was not grouped. Okay, so now they are, they are, they look good. Actually, I think I want the lashes to be thicker. I'm sorry. I love a good lash. This is my go-to <laughs> makeup routine. Uh, if you know me, you know exactly what I mean. <laughs> I'm just going to thicken. Yes, that's how I wanted. Okay, perfect. So we're going to do the same thing for the nose. We just need just a tiny, tiny little kind of half moon if you want. So I'm gonna just create a circle. I'm gonna use the scissor tool, which is rare that we see that. But if I go and click on the anchors, it actually separates half of the of the circle. I do want a tiny nose. And again, to have that same look from the lashes, just going to make sure that it's rounded cap. It actually already looks like a, a mount, which is super cute, but <laughs> this here, just that mini line for a mount will be hard to give it a lot of expressions down the line. So we're going to create the mouth too, but we have the nose right here. Actually making sure that everything is centered. Oh, my eyes weren't grouped properly. There you go. And now we can create the mouth. I'm going to do the exact same thing. Actually, let me just go back to the point of reference for the mouth. And sometimes I need to look at it to understand how it's made. And again, um, this is like, if you do a lot of design over and over, you'll look at something and you'll, you'll know how it's made. Um, and whenever you're at that stage, that's a good place to be in. There's no more mystery sometimes, but um, it's, uh, it's okay. Um, actually, there's no mouth that I really like here. What about this? I want something like this here, like open. And also being mindful of time, we might just have enough time to do the mouth. And then I'm going to just explain to you what we will be working on for the next session and when that's going to be. And yeah, happy days. Okay, so same thing here. I'm going to... This is about the size that I want the mouth. Scissor tool. I'm going to take my pen tool and see here, I it's like not a fully formed shape, but I'm going to take my pen tool and then connect it by doing this. And then it is its own shape. Like if I wanted to fill that up, it is a shape, so that was super easy. And it's not its not necessarily the prettiest mouth, but I'm going to take the direct selection tool. Actually, no. Going to do the pen tool with a plus. So if you actually click on the plus, see how the pen tool adds a little mini plus on the side. And I'm going to go in the middle, add an anchor. So then if I click here, I can actually move that anchor better and start shaping the mouth better. Perfect. This may change, but again, trusting the process. Okay. So this is starting to look like something. 
<laughs> this is definitely missing a tongue because right now it looks like there's no teeth or nothing happening in there, which is a little scary. Um, but it's it's getting there. So if we again just make sure that it is centered. And again, the perspective here won't be good, but just as a test, we can kind of see where this is going and this is like shaping to be really, really well. So hi, Alessandra, nice to see you here. Hi, hi Polo, um, it's good to see you and thank you so much for watching this stream. It's been so much fun to have this first community show. Okay, you know what? I'm going to do the tongue because it is kind of looking freaky for me. And then I'll share with you the rest of the presentation that I have cooked up for you. So I love to work with shape that, you know, I'm, I'm sure that we'll have that nice curve whenever I can. So just drafting a circle and just to make sure that I see where it's, where it's hitting. If I do this. And again, going into the Pathfinder. See everything when I use this one here, the divide, everything became a shape, but that's okay because then I can maybe use it for something else. So if I ungroup it, I'm just going to do this. Now we can see this here. It could be a nice pink for the tongue. And here will be black. Okay, so we will be adding a bit more. We need some cheeks. We need maybe some freckles to add some personality to this, uh, this face. <laughs> but we have something really good going here. And I think it's the perfect place to actually um, end this working um, session. So if we just go back to the presentation here, uh, you have a full schedule of when the next shows will be. And if you click on the link here, like if it's added onto the YouTube, if you're watching the replay, um, you know, you like, and this will be updated week per week and you can always go back to the previous shows just to make sure that you are up to date. I would love to see what you're working on. I'd love to see your process if you want to. And who knows, maybe I'll take some of your images and show it on this stream. So if you want to share your mascot design or character design, you can definitely send me some DMs into uh, design underscore IP or already easy. Those are both accounts that I manage. And um, who knows what, what can happen in the future, right? I'd love to see what you can do. Also, it is not created yet, but we will have a full project page on Behance where you will see this whole project unfold because we started it today. Couldn't have a page just yet, but make sure to check that out on my Behance page. And I mean, this is just a quick preview of the finish line of what we will be working towards to have your own mini printable eight page folded zine at home. So, I mean, thank you so much for this first show and I can't wait to see what you will create and we'll see you soon next time.